Hi guys, this is Krista Lynn and thank you for joining me for part two of my astrological profile of the Jody Arias case. And so this is very exciting today because I'm going to be talking a little further about what was truly going on behind the scenes in this very, very passionate and yet ultimately devastating relationship. It's amazing to me that the, na that the nation gets obsessed with these cases, and we all do. We're glued to them. And I think there's just a little part of each one of us that can identify, maybe not on quite such an extreme level, but we can identify with the passions of love and the emotions it stirs up in us and what actually could take place to allow this to ultimately come to such a horrible horrible situation so those are the things that we're all going to take a look at so first of all i want to talk about um travis alexander and i do want to say that this was a horrible crime nobody deserves anything like this no matter what perspectives we come from and i am very sad that this was his final outcome but in taking a look at his birth chart. Now when I'm talking about a birth chart, I explained a little more detail in the part one, but astrologically it's believed that the moment we were born that the planets were aligned in such a specific way that they create a specific energy, kind of like a fingerprint in the sky, and that somehow as we come into this earth we embody some of those energies and spend our life working through them. No two birth charts are the same. And so we see here that um, uh, Travis Alexander's birth chart was very, very interesting. So let's get into it. Well, first of all, he was born July 28th, 1977. I do not have his time of birth, so I'm unable to give you his ascendant. Um, but he was a Leo. And it's very interesting to me because... In all of the interviews I saw over and over again, his friends that loved him so dearly said the same thing. He was larger than life. He was a bright star coming out of a very dark, dark life. They recognized him as this man that just loved his family, loved his friends, very kind. And he was a motivational speaker. He had a story to tell and he was very proud to to try and rise from the dark childhood that he started out with. Um, it is reported that he was, um, his first eight years, his, he lived with his parents and they were addicted to crystal meth in Riverside, California. And so we can imagine that this was a very difficult upbringing. What he saw, what was imprinted in his life during those early years must have been you know, very devastating. His grandmother ended up raising him and his siblings, and he was about the age of eight. She took over from there, and she brought them into the Mormon church. So for the first time in his life, he's got structure, and he's got, you know, that feeling of security, which looking at Travis's birth chart was extremely important to him. He Because the moon was in Capricorn when he was born. Now, the moon sign, when we look at a natal birth chart, we one of the first things we look at is the moon sign. And remember, guys, this isn't about sun signs, only sun signs in the back of a magazine. This is about, this is about a whole universal lineup that was going on and how they influenced each other and how it really creates in us who we are. In the moon, being that the moon was in Capricorn, let's take a look at what kind of person he truly was at the heart of the matter. Well, m people who have their moon in Capricorn a lot of times do keep their emotions under check. They can be very competent. They can have turbulent emotional um, things going on underneath the surface because they have a really hard time for it to come out. They're very cool-headed the desire for very clear boundaries. They do not like to take risks. They like security, guys. They really want that security, safety and security. Um, they highly respect tradition and structures. Um, they do protect their own interests. 
They're calm, cool, and collected. Um, they don't like messy emotions. They can be very hard on themselves. And um, they can have a sarcastic side to them because they're hiding that sensitivity. Um, and one another important thing is they need to be respected. They need to be respected, and that's what gives them security. So having respect for the people or from the people around him was very important to him. Um, I think this is another reason why the Mormon Mormonism was very important to him. He found structure. He found his values. He found the things he truly did want to live by. That was true to his heart. But what do we have going on a little bit more underneath the surface? As I look into his life, I see that he struggled with a lot of things. And the other thing we see um, is Mercury, which is his plan of communication, was in Virgo. And Virgo is good communicators, intellectual, very good speakers. They know how to, you know, investigate, dissect, do all of those things. So that is another factor. We remember that Jody had her Mercury in Cancer. And I did want to make a note I forgot to make in the last video. When you look at people with Mercury in Cancer, one of the things you see is they have excellent memories. Excellent memories. Don't forget a thing because everything's impressed upon them. And yet we see that she tried to use the I don't remember in her case, but I guess we'll leave that up to you guys. The other thing that's very interesting is that Jody is a Cancer. Cancers are extremely emotional. They're crying all the time. They feel everything. And that was really in opposition to his moon sign. So you see him probably in some ways attracted to the opposite, seeing somebody just be completely show their emotions. So there was an attraction, but also looking at his moon sign, that was difficult for him. That might not have been too comfortable as he got deeper into the relationship. Now we do see, I do see where the fireworks started taking off here, guys. And I believe that we see it because Travis, Venus had Venus in Gemini and Mars in Gemini. Now you have in Gemini people who think more from the head. They can have a superficial air to them, but they are the social butterflies. They get bored very easy. And, you know, all of these girlfriends came up to the surface that he was having. And that is, you know, that is a Gemini trait. It's interesting, though, because Jody also had Venus in Gemini. And she had her moon sign in Gemini. So many people don't realize that, when, that Geminis can also create a very strong sexual um, experience they experience things on a very high electric level and whenever you see a conjunction with Venus and Mars especially in Gemini you almost get what we call in astrology a scorpionic effect because you've doubled up those two planets they are the same and so underneath this man that loved tradition loved the values, wanted security, was a very, very sexually passionate man. And so he struggled with where to put all of this energy and yet keep it under in check and under control. But now you take a woman like Jody, who is willing to cross all lines with no boundaries to get her man. And you kind of see what might have been going on here. So I think that it's very, very interesting. The other thing I want to talk about is some of the, the transits that were happening during Travis's, when he was born, in his natal chart. Okay, so just give me a second here. I had everything all organized until I turned on the, the go button. So... We do see that um, there was a couple things going on behind the scenes here, okay? One of the things that were going on behind the scenes is the moon was squaring Pluto when he was born. And what this can create is a love life filled and riddled with 
radical scenes, jealousy, possessiveness, and we see that happening. Especially all of the relationships that came out. They all had the same thing going on. You know, the suspicions, was he faithful, all of those things. We also see here... And this is a very, very strong influence. In part one, I talked about when planets line up or cross each other, we look to see if they are in agreement or if they are arguing. And in this particular case, Mars was opposing Neptune, okay? And what this creates in somebody's subconscious can be a fear of rejection can be a lack of self-confidence, but also can be an attraction to mysteries, to intriguing things. Um, they can also have an addiction to fantasy and sexual fantasies. These are all things that get a little delusional because anytime we see Neptune, we see delusion. We also can see great inspiration, but because it was opposite Mars, where he has all this passion, it was creating, creating definitely um, not too healthy of a way of looking at his relationship. So these were things that he was struggling with. Remember guys, we're all in the same playing field here. No matter what package we put it in, we all have those things that we are struggling with. We also wanna take a look at what was happening, okay? I talked the other day about not only knowing what was happening while you were born, but what's actually happening in the transits and what's happening for today. Because how those planets are lining up will actually affect us each individually and differently. So I went ahead and took a look at what was going on. I started out with June of 2006 because this is apparently when this relationship started. So when this relationship started, Travis, um, Mars was in conjunction with the sun. So that can be a good thing. He was full of bravado. You know, he was in great form. He was confident. He was feeling good, attracting love. We also see that Uranus was squaring Neptune. Let me see those little squares. We got to pay attention. Um, this is the time in his life when his convictions were a little rattled, guys. He was struggling between what he wanted and these passionate desires that were coming out as a young man. So he was torn between those things. A little crisis of faith going on here. In June of 2007, one year later, um, we see that Jupiter was in, in conjunction with Neptune. Okay, and this kind of gives that person that feeling of rosy colored glasses. They're just not seeing everything as it is. And we know that this relationship was really getting going about then. We also have Pluto was in opposition to Venus at this time. And this creates stormy emotional relationships, breakups, and jealousy. Well, as this case unfolded, we found out there were several girlfriends that all thought he was exclusive to him. And so a lot of struggling emotional relationships were going on. So he was definitely juggling some things. The other thing I see here that's very interesting is Neptune was trining Venus. Now, when we see a trine, we see harmony. But this can, I call this transit is the magic pill of love, the magic love pill. When these two things happen in your, in your transits, and they affect you, it's like you are just so open to love and sensuality and all the boundaries kind of melt away. You almost just, you know, it's, it's like being a teenager again. You just have this overwhelming feeling of love and you can't always see straight. This was going on in his chart during this whole thing. Okay, so we have to really take a look at that. Now, I took a look at June 4th in 2008. This was the day that he was killed. And what was going on in his natal chart? I just took a look to see what kind of things he could have been experiencing on an emotional and psychological level. What I see here was Venus was in opposition to Neptune. So remember, Venus is your love sign. Neptune is, you know, that 
that spiritual planet of delusion at times. So they're in opposition. They're against each other. This creates this uneasy feeling, this fog around you. So you just wasn't thinking clearly. You just wasn't thinking clearly. I mean, we find out that many of his friends were telling him, you know, you've got to get away from this situation. It's not healthy for you. But he just kept getting dragged back in to her ways. You know, she made herself very available to him. And I think that, you know, she was there on every corner. So she was just waiting. She studied his patterns. She knew his weak spots and she pounced. Um, we also see that Neptune was still trining Venus. So he was still in this kind of, you know, this thing of love. Is this love? Is this real? You know, he wanted so desperately to have that wife, that woman to live his life with. He really, I believe, truly wanted that. But I believe he was just very, very drawn to this dark side of Jody Arias. You know, it just became almost an addiction to him. And I, I do believe that he struggled deeply because of his convictions and the raw nature that was going on that he was being subject to. We also see that Uranus was squaring Venus. So Uranus is the planet of unexpected surprises, radical change, radical things that can happen. And it was posing as love. And this creates, again, stormy, unexpected turn in love. And that is what happened that day. So I hope this was helpful, you guys. This is just a small, brief analysis. There's so much more I could do on all of this. And if you have any questions or you would like me to, you know, do any more on this, I'd be happy to do it. I just want, again, to say that this isn't about judging. This is about realizing that we all have things to work through. This passionate love affair became unchecked and went to the ultimate level Um Ultimately, he lost his life. So we really have to think, guys. We really have to pay attention. Know yourself. And um, I just want to say that I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, you can email me in the link below. Thanks a lot.